Hey traders, it's the Cowboy. Welcome to Elliott Wave Cafe. In today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about the FIBs. And there's a couple of, um, there's a little bit of a confusion out there regarding what these uh, FIBs are, some of the extensions and some of the expansions. And I wanted to clear clear the air a little bit on that. And, um, you know, everybody's kind of familiar with the FIB retracements. It's a pretty common thing. Well, I'll kind of run through them and just to show you, uh, you know, a little trick on there that you can use uh, when you deploy FIBs to your analysis. And uh, before we jump on, here is where you can find us on Telegram at Elliott Wave Cafe. There is also a public chat and there is a premium room. Also on Twitter, I'm at Elliott Cafe. So let's jump over and take a look. So I'm going to start with tr a trading view software. I'm going to show you also on my Motive Wave software as well, a couple of differences. But what I have here is I have a little toolbox where I just kind of placed you know, I think you can do this in TradingView and, you know, I just kind of placed my, um, you know, impulse waves, my uh, triangles, my kind of corrections, you know, combos and, and double combos and along with the FIB retracement and a trend based FIB extension. So you pretty much all of you are familiar with the retracement, maybe some of you even with the trend based FIB extension, but you can also find them back in here into the left column. You can go and just kind of click and you see kind of I favorite them. So the FIB retracement is one. So you can just kind of grab that. And, you know, that's pretty straightforward. You want to measure how far, let's say, a corrective move. Uh, you know, for example, in Bitcoin, uh, you're going here from all time highs, you know, maybe back here towards 50,000, 60, 600. And then you want to see, you know, how much that was. Um, you know, when this uh, kind of uh, corrective move pulled back. So you, you start back at those lows and then you go over to the highs with the horizontal uh, kind of cursor line you want to extend them to be out of the way a little bit but you just kind of line it up with the top and this kind of gives you back in here it gives you the retracement right and uh, this is pretty straightforward i mean you know the bitcoin pulled back here at the 50 percent this is not a fib level it's just a it's just a percentage retracement and then you have here the 618 that's your golden ratio is about forty nine thousand three seventy. and you know if this is let's say a correct interpretation and you know, this is just a three-wave setback. We might expect Bitcoin to break higher. It might not. But, you know, this is how much it actually retraced from this move. Now, the other interesting thing is um, that you can actually project higher and see how far this move can actually travel and give you, you know, some targets, um, you know, uh, up to the new highs. Uh, and to do that, you're just kind of going to have to delete this and just go back. And um, let's see, let's open up uh, and take out the trend-based feed extension. And you do the same, but now you're going to have three points of contact. Before, you only had one point here and one point higher. But for a FIB, uh, you know, extension, that's how, um, and this is a little bit of a difference because this is where the confusion comes, right? And how do you call this? Do you call it an extension or do you call it as an expansion? So let's just go with what TradingView calls it, a trend-based FIB extension. So you're going to uh, kind of place your horizontal line at those lows. You're going to take a point of contact and you're just going to put it up there towards the top of the, uh, the wave, right at the top there. And then you have the third point of contact is how deep actually this retracement is. And as you see how I kind of pull it down, those FIB levels appear up at the top. So now, you know, if I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, um, you could see that the software actually projected, you know, these FIBs up into this high. So this is pretty standard. You know, most of you, again, are familiar with this. You can kind of, uh, um, you know, label it and go in here in the, uh, you know, in the settings and you can pick, you know, most of the common ones. Let's say you want to find out where it's equality. Where are you going to put one? You're going to find out where is the next kind of FIB projections, 127.2, 1, 1.272. It's another, you know, very common one. Then um, the next one, it's 1618 for the third wave. Then you have, you know, maybe you do a two on there, right? This is your kind of two. So that means it's double than, um, than that first original wave and so on. So you can kind of place with, play with these levels. Um, so you in here, you can see that back and you can actually, I think, uh, you know, you can tell the software also to tell you, you know, what the prices are right next to these, I guess. If you could go here, there's probably, you know, you can extend them and then here you go, prices. And now it kind of, now it kind of tells you, you know, what you're looking for. So if, if this is correct, I would say this is pulled back into the 618. And then, you know, one of the, uh, you know, projections, one of the extensions uh, to the upside would be this first um, equality, right? One versus one. So this is wave one on here and then multiplied from this level, right? That's equality. Then that's 127% and that's 161.8%. 
right? So this is a very kind of straightforward, um, you know, tool to kind of project. And, you know, these can take several forms. I mean, um, what the targets are for certain waves, it's a subject that's beyond this discussion. I've done videos on those. You can check my YouTube channel in, in FIBS, and, and I, have, I have quite a few up there that explain what I'm looking for, so for example, when it's a fifth wave, when it's a third wave, when it's a... Um, you know, a, a wave C when there is a flat, stuff like that. So there's there's all kind of projections that you can use, um, you know, depending on where you are in the wave count. But this is just to kind of show you how to use this, this extension tool. Now, here comes the interesting part, because this is where things kind of get confusing. So this is called a FIB extension, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, you basically need three points of contact for that. Now, let me just delete this. And... Um, let's see if we can find out so what if you want to know for example uh, without doing any um, three waves point of contact what if you want to find out you know what is a multiple of this wave to the upside uh, and you know how do you do that right this is a little trick because you know sometimes the prices will respond uh, based on this FIB multiples based on this kind of FIB expansions that you can get, uh, you know, once you measure, let's say, a move, you know, you can pick this one or, I mean, you can, basically you can pick anything and these markets are kind of in relationship to each other all the time. So once again, you go back in here and um, this is because TradingView software, it's all it's got is this, is this two um, you know, a, a kind of FIB tools on here. So you're going to have to go back to the FIB retracement. And what you do is you can go back in here and start at the bottom. And then you go here all the way at the top. And you can see the moment I've done that, uh, I already have a number one on there, right? This is, so this, what this does, you will measure the FIB multiples of this wave. That's all I care about. I don't care about this retracement at all. Right, I don't care about this. All I care is just about this one. So I go right here into my settings, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, you know, what are some of the most common um, fib levels that you know the price could travel the moment we break to new highs, and and one of them is this 27 uh, percent, 127 percent. And the way you do that is you actually have to go negative on the software. You, what you're going to do is you're going to go, if you project it, because I'll show you another trick. So if you project it from these lows to the highs, uh, since these are positive levels on the retracement, you know, to kind of get your projected move up there, you're going to have to go negative. So you're going to go minus 0 0.27, and that's going to give you, you know, that kind of 127% multiple of this, um, you know, of the move basically from these lows. The next one that you can use, it's uh, it's the negative one. Uh, you can look also at, let's say, you want to do the 618, right? So you're going to go and put minus 0 0.618, and that's going to give you the next level to the upside. So these, you can, you can use this um, in um, combination with your fib retracements as well so you're going to go back and you can take a fib retracement tool um, again and you can go um, actually you can do a fib ex extension i was going to say so you can go and do this trend-based fib extension and take it from here you go to the top right and now you know you come back to the bottom of of that pullback right and now you have you have the fibonacci extensions um coming back from this uh, pullback, right? So you can see that in some places you're going to start to have overlaps, right? And those are important areas that you can actually target if you're looking to the upside. So, for example, up here, right, in terms of this um, extension move, you can see that 1618, right, it uh, comes at about 89,494. But also you have equality between this move and then, so between this, and then you take the same and then project it from there and you go to equality and you're exactly at the same level, right? Because that's that's 100% distance travel of this entire move on there, right? Below that, you get the 618, but you also get the 127. So you can use this in combinations to find, um, to find you some targets 
when you look to the upside or to the downside, okay, it doesn't matter. So this is a little cheat sheet in here that I'm showing you to kind of know how to use this fib retracement tool to project to the upside certain moves or to the downside. But it's just based on, just kind of delete this out of the way, it's just kind of based on, um, uh, you know, on certain legs of the market, right? So you might want it to measure this one and see how this does. Right. So you're going to take your fib retracement tool. You're going to start at the bottom here. You're going to go all the way to the top. You're going to put those negative values that I showed you, and they're going to give you the upside projections. Then you can combine the fib, um, you know, retracement, that, that fib um, uh, extension tool. So you're going to go all the way up there. You're going to retrace, and that's going to give you another projected move. And that's going to come, you know, sometimes up into these levels or sometimes a little bit higher. Right, so now you have two points. You have, you have, you can use this to your advantage. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, it's uh, you can do this in reverse as well. And this is called the reverse Fibonacci. And um, actually, uh, Jeff Kennedy from Elliott Wave International is the one that kind of coined the term, the you know Fibonacci reverse multiple. And uh, you know he's done really nice work on it as well. Um, I, I kind of learned about it first, not from him, but um, back in 2009, 2010, when I was doing a bunch of Forex, and um, I was using that quite a lot into my trading. I still use it to this day because it's a very interesting, um, you know, uh, like a trick that you can use with the Elliott Wave to give you, you know, very quick targets. And the only the reason I do that is because uh, you wanted to know, for example, uh, if I have a move to the downside on here, right? And... Um, you know, let's say that I'm expecting the market to sell off, but it doesn't. Usually when that doesn't happen uh, and you're actually correcting, 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 and you're passing the 78.6 or 88.2 multiple, I mean, retracement of the decline, you're going to go back up higher, right? And what's the level that you're going to go to? Most of the times it's going to be 127% uh, retracement of this lag to the upside, Okay. And it's exactly the same as you would as you would use as you would do it back from here, right? But except th that you're gonna you're gonna actually use it on something that goes down, not something that goes up. So let me show you how you do that. So you're gonna go there, the same one. It's the it's called the fib retracement, but instead of measuring from the lows to the highs, you're gonna measure from the highs to the lows. So you're gonna start at the high there, and you're gonna come at the low, right? You're gonna put your line down there. Right. And up here I have the fibs, you know, those those kind of negative ones because now I'm flipping it around. So my negative values are going to show to the downside while my positive values are going to show to the upside. So you can see that I already have them, but you can go and, um, you know, and just kind of put them up in here as well. And you can choose them. You can do 127 percent and that will appear there at 1.27 um, as two or you can do the 1618 as well. So all you got to do is just pick those and just type those values in and those things are going to pop up on there. So now what this kind of tells you, it's really interesting. Most of the times the markets, the moment they pull back above the 78.6 uh, of this decline, right? You're looking at that. The markets are going to travel all the way up there to 127. Um, actually, Jeff Kennedy uses 1.382%. Uh, so that's 138.2%. It's a, it's a, it's really a preference. You know, I think the 127, 127 is a, um, it's a square root of 1618. That's why, uh, you know, this is a little bit more common. But also you can use instead of 27, you can use 138.2 and it's pretty much just slightly higher. So, and this would be a very nice target to the upside. So, and you will see many times in the markets, um, especially in the Forex markets, some equities, that this will be places where you could get some stop runs up in there and then the market reverses. So we also use this uh, levels to kind of tell us where some of these flats can return from, right? So if you have, for example, a running flat or an expanded flat, that would kind of go all the way up there to 127, 138, sometimes to 1618. Um, you know, reverse uh, fib of the drop, right? So let's just uh, calculate this a little bit and just kind of look, let, let me delete it. And let's just look to see how far this traveled. So I'm going to go and take the same tool. I'm going to start at the top of this wave, right on there. And I'm going to come all the way at the bottom of the move right there. Right, and you can see how we got in very, very close to the 127% before we retraced. So every time you know you kind of retrace the these moves, these spikes are going to go all the way up there. Let's do another one. Let's see how this looks. I let me check. Um, you know, for example, we would do this leg to the downside. So we're going to go and kind of start up there, right, and come here at the bottom. 
and you can see that you just kind of pass 1618, you're between 1618 and two, um, you know, and 200% of this whole decline, right? So these are good targets to the upside. I mean, we've gotten a little bit of resistance up into these levels. Uh, also at about 127, we got in a pullback on here. So, you know, go ahead and use this. This is a little cheat sheet. This is a little trick um, that you can use in your analysis. So um, basically, what I wanted to show you again is I wanted to show you the difference with uh, the Motivay software because in here I have things a little bit different. They're they're all kind of you know looking at the same things, but um, and this is a chart of Tezos which looks like it's breaking uh, you know a little bit higher. But I wanted to just kind of show you that on here. So you basically you can see I mean I have an extension tool, I have an expansion, and then I also have um, uh, let's see in here uh, where is it? Uh, so I have the extension and I have I'm missing the uh, let's see what it is uh, so I have the expansion this one it's the three points of contact so this one it's very similar to what I have on there except that you know Motivay software calls it expansion and then I have the extension right this is the other one that I was kind of showing you right now so basically if you wanted to measure let's say this move from here right you just kind of put it like that right and now it kind of gives you the upside values um, you know, they also gives you the retracements back in here, but also gives you the upside values of this entire move. So you can see that, you know, for example, you're looking at 200%. Uh, so if you wanted to measure right from here and then from here all the way up there, that's equality, right? And then you have some of the other levels uh, that you can look at. Uh, the other way you can use this again as a trick is you have to kind of go the other way around if you wanted to measure it. Uh, so all I wanted to, sh to show you is that, you know, they kind of have this incorporated in here. One is called an extension, the one that I just showed you, you know, that projects upwards. And the other one, it's called an expansion where you kind of have three points of contact and you kind of pull it back like that. But this one, instead of measuring, you know, from the low to the top, you can go the other way. You can go, and actually in here, I don't have, um, I only have it projected down, but you can do this little trick and you can measure it like this. Let me show you here so you can uh, kind of do that right so instead of because the software will recognize if you're changing the angle it's going to put it down so if you wanted to measure you just kind of have to pull it up and go to the top of the wave like that and that would show you a reverse fib of this decline up in here right and up here I have 123 percent but I can change this so ratio settings and I'm going to go instead of 123 uh, oh, actually, I have 127 as well. Uh, it just doesn't show it. So let me, uh, I don't know why it doesn't do it. Apply. And uh, it's probably, for some reason, it's kind of scrunched up in there, but it's probably right below this 138.2%. Uh, so anyway, it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's another little quick tool that you can use uh in motivay software as well along uh you know with the one in in the in the trading view to kind of give you projections uh, to the upside uh when the moves kind of so for example right now in tezos right i would look for this move if we're breaking higher one of my targets in here would be uh this 730 right between 715 and 730 because roughly that's where i'm going to get 127 percent um, and um, the moment I'm kind of crossing above the 78.6, those uh, would be my targets to the upside. And again, you can combine those with uh, your uh, FIB retracements, right? So I would take, uh, let's say, my expansion tool from here, and you push it in here like this. This would be your pullback, and this would be you know, the top of the wave. So now you have all the FIBs on there. Right. And now I know that for 100%, I'm going to look at about 1043. If I take the other tool and I, I'm trying to, you know, um, just kind of uh, see what's going on if I measure it like that. So I'm going to start again at these lows in here. And I'm going to go to the top of the line. And I want to see what I have some um, some combination. So you can see up here 150%. It's 78.6. 123 is very close to the 618. So this is a pretty good upside target uh, for... Uh, Tezos, and I would expect some kind of a reaction from here because I have a nice cluster of fibs up into these levels. Another one that's up high here, it's at about uh, 17. 
So anyway, go ahead and play around with this. I, I hope this was helpful. And, um, you know, I look forward to hearing your comments and suggestions. Guys, you can uh, also find me uh, here, <laughs> um, you know, at uh, Elliot Cafe slash, I mean, underscore bot. And there is, uh, for our service here, there is a seven-day trial, no card required. And then here is some of the stuff that we do on there at Elliot Cafe. You can give us a try. We do a lot of different things into the, uh, into the pro room and uh, trade all sorts of markets um, all day long. And there's lessons and daily videos and stuff like that so um, the links are below that so thanks again for watching i hope this is helpful for you and i'll talk to you in the next one bye, -bye.